In James Cameron's film Avatar, the Navi, the forest dwellers of the planet Pandora, revere a magnificent, spiritually active tree of souls, which sends out healing wood sprites that look like airborne jellyfish. The scientists in the story were fascinated to discover that the root system of the forest were completely interconnected and acted as one nervous system for the entire planet. They also discovered that the Navi practiced forms of telepathy and sacred bonding, a flow of energy that inhabits everything. Within this spiritually interconnected ecosystem, the Navi reveal that the goal of the mother goddess is not to take sides in any war, but to protect only the balance of life. And in more than one instance in the story, a miraculous transformation takes place when the whole community gathers for a healing ceremony that involves the Tree of Souls and the community supporting and holding the container for healing, spreading energy across and amongst the whole. Now the redwood trees in Muir Woods in San Francisco are some of the tallest and widest trees on the planet Earth. Some trees are so wide that it takes 40 grown-up adults to make one circle around it. These trees are known to live for literally thousands of years, and each year they grow bigger and bigger. Most tall trees have roots that go down deep to help keep them stable. For example, the roots of the palm tree are as deep as the height of the tree. However, the redwood trees are the tallest trees on earth and yet their roots are not deep at all. You see, it seems the redwood trees have some special mystical power. The roots grow outward instead of deep under the ground. And when these roots come in contact with roots of another redwood tree, they wrap around each other um, and bond with a tree through its roots multiple times. Eventually, becoming all connected, one tree to another. The roots hold on to one another through the harshest of weather and keep the family of trees standing strong and tall. You might say that the roots of the older and wiser trees hold on to the roots of the new ones. They're basically saying, you'll grow big and strong just like me, so reach for the sky and we'll help you get there. You have the strength of hundreds of trees in the forest because we're all connected. Our strength is shared together and it grows together. This is the truth of families and schools and networks and communities. Our strength is shared together and grows together. Cooperation and collaboration are the basic attributes that are needed to organize. Similar to the redwood trees, our families, our schools, our communities need to collaborate so that the entire team rises higher and higher. This interconnectedness is at the foundation of social and emotional well-being. It helps each individual to grow, to inspire and motivate each other. It builds trust and transparency, and at the same time, a feeling of safety to explore new ideas, to innovate and produce with a feeling of satisfaction. The safety of interconnectedness builds capacity and creativity and resilience in people, in schools, in networks, and in communities. So I want to close this introduction about why we're tackling social and emotional wellness with a word about mangroves. Mangrove trees and bushes are special because they live on the edges. With hundreds of versions worldwide, they've adapted to survive and thrive in some of the most inhospitable conditions. Rather than just establish their roots at the base of a tree, Mangroves possess the unique ability to send down roots from their branches. These roots reach into the earth and send out even more roots to keep the tree firmly grounded, even in the face of salty or brackish water, huge waves, typhoons, and hurricanes. In tropical storms, mangroves are likely to be the first hit, and yet they often sustain the least damage. 
As we move into our big table, big ideas, and big collaboration this season on social and emotional wellness, I invite you to hold these lessons from the trees about healing, interconnectedness, and resiliency. It is our job as the established older and wiser ones to teach our younger ones well. We must collaborate to develop in them three key characteristics that are at the foundation of social and emotional wellness. First, adaptability. Often the environments in which we find ourselves will not always be ideal, and sometimes it can be seemingly hostile to our survival and growth. We need to learn how to adapt to the environment in which we find ourselves. Second, connection. Despite the conditions, we possess the capacity to practice shared learning and community. We cannot survive if we try to learn, grow, heal, build, or love in isolation. Like the redwoods and the mangroves, we can't withstand the pressure of life and difference if we decide to go it alone. Instead, we can learn to recognize and establish interconnected roots that keep us grounded in the face of some of our tough, toughest challenges. And finally, we must teach our children, our schools, our networks, our city, and ourselves to take risks. No matter where we are, we can always send down roots from our branches. We can go out on a limb, if you will, and exercise leadership in new and uncharted territories. Whether connecting to a support network of our peers, collaborating across organizations, or engaging in our own grounding wellness practices, what we know from creation and the trees is that we always have an opportunity to firmly root ourselves wherever we are, whatever the circumstances, no matter how difficult, to withstand the conditions, thrive and connect in the soil in which we find ourselves. May we all be inspired to do so for our city and our future. We hope you'll join us for the next So What at the Mayor's Big Table.